Good morning. Somewhere in this fog behind me is the refreshed third generation Skoda Superb, a car that can be described only in comparison to the competition. Why do I need to talk about the Superb in reference to the competition? Because this way I can fish out the details which make this car better or worse. Skoda is a product designed in a way that you can't find any faults, but is the Skoda Superb really the best you can get? For this comparison I made a table, which you can see on the screen right now. It includes specs for major competitors and also Audi A6 to make things a bit more interesting. The price is for top spec model with comparable performance, but without options. The prices are for general reference, they are from the German market mid-December 2019. And in case of Audi, everything is an option. Besides objective technical specs, I will also talk about some of the options, or lack of them, as well as how some of the systems work, if I have relevant experience from other models. I will also add my subjective opinion regarding ride and handling, noise levels, etc. For many years, Skoda has been all about offering the most car for a reasonable price. And indeed, it is one of the largest cars in the D segment. However, Opel Insignia and Toyota Camry are longer, Ford Mondeo and VW Arteon are wider, and Kia Stinger has longer wheelbase. The Superb is one of the lightest models in its class, but VW Passat or Peugeot 508 are lighter. There are also cars faster, more efficient and more powerful than the Superb. So in terms of basic specs, the Superb is average. Its piece de resistance, it's the boot, which is the largest in the segment. The boot in the Superb is not only the largest in its segment at 625 liters, I measured it and it really is what it says on the box. It's also full of so-called simply clever solutions. So there are shopping bag hooks, a flashlight, like you really need it. There are nets to store your stuff, many nets, a 12 volt socket, a handle to release the backrests and all that kind of stuff. And also if you go for the optional mini spare, which is under the floor here, it doesn't take up any of the 625 liters. It really is what it is. This test car also has a towing hitch. The Superb can tow up to 2.2 tons in the most powerful engine variant. This one can tow up to 2 tons. The boot opens and closes with gesture. There is also a button to close the electric tailgate, but there is no button to lock the car as well. If you ask me what changed in the Superb after the facelift, I can honestly say I have no clue. I'm sure die-hard Skoda fans will tell you there are completely new headlamps, bumpers, LED lights in the back, and the Skoda logo has been replaced with letters spelling out the brand name. I suspect this may have something to do with Skoda entering new non-European markets, in which case the Native American headdress, because that's what it is, may be confused with logos of Far Eastern brands, political correctness aside. In the back, the space is superb, get it? Just like in many other cars in this segment. The seats are comfortable, the middle seat is wide enough for an actual adult. There is an optional 230 volt socket, so you don't have to worry about power when working on your laptop. And you can also rest. Skoda offers foot rests, like so. It offers blankies. Yay! This is so cool. And it also offers these weird looking horn things so that your head doesn't wobble around when you're driving on rougher surfaces. This is just like an airplane! Almost. What is less pleasant about traveling in the back of the Superb is that it floats too much. A slight turn of the steering wheel is felt in the back like the moose test. Also, soundproofing is average at best. The biggest differences in the front are the new virtual cluster and the new infotainment system. You can adapt the virtual cockpit contents to your needs and change the colors as well. The color of the virtual cockpit is the same as the color of the ambient lighting. You can also save the settings in one of several driver profiles. 
and assign them to the key as well. The infotainment system also works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Like the Volkswagen, also Skoda is all about practical interiors. There is a lot of storage, including a place for a tablet or a larger notebook under the armrest. Great if you're traveling for a meeting with your clients. Cup holders are on the small side, rather for a small cup of coffee or a tall, slick energy drink can than a half a liter bottle of water or a proper coffee mug. In the doors, there is, of course, an umbrella. Only Skoda and Rolls-Royce offer this feature, although Rolls-Royce also blows air on the umbrella to dry it. To be honest, instead of the umbrella and the simply clever ice scraper under the fuel door, I'd rather have heated wing mirrors. On warm days, you will appreciate ventilated seats. And on cooler days like today, there are heated seats and heated steering wheel with three level settings. Now, maybe Skoda doesn't make the most exciting cars in the world. However, I do like that they place the starter button where the ignition normally is, because this is where you usually first reach when you want to start the car, like now. Here, I was planning to say the Skoda Superb has good suspension, which is comfortable during long motorway cruises and good on bumpy roads. That was before we recorded this drive on cobblestones. Yes, this is what the Press Fleet Superb suspension sounded like from the outside. You can't hear it from the inside, but imagine arriving like this to see a client. Test before you buy. Skoda Superb gets 1.5 and 2 liter TSI petrol engines, as well as 2 liter TDI diesels, with power ranging from 150 to 272 horsepower. Entry level motor gets 6 speed manual or DSG, while the more powerful cars are available only with the double clutch gearbox. Top engine variants also get optional all-wheel drive. In 2020, the Superb will also be available as a PHEV with the powertrain from the Passat GTE. This is a 2-liter, 190-horsepower petrol version Kia Stinger, Opel Insignia or Renault Talisman can be had with more power, although some of them will have smaller engines. Around the city you can probably risk a 1.5 liter motor, but for long fast motorway drives 2 liters is more preferable. Skoda promises combined WLTP fuel economy figure of 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Usually driving on the motorway I'm prepared for much more. However, here after 800 kilometers at 140 kilometers per hour on cruise control, I got less than 7 liters. With a 66 liter tank, you also get a tank like this in a Passat and, and the Arteon you can get about 1,200 kilometers range. That's like going from Amsterdam to Warsaw on a single tank. You can also get adaptive cruise control with lane assist, so you only need to stop for energy drink refills and to go to the toilet, although I'd suggest to drink plenty of water and stretch your legs every couple of hours. Health and safety first, 15 minutes you save on brakes will be lost in traffic on any ring road around a major European town. Adaptive cruise control works much smoother than in the Mazda 6, but the lane assist feature is not as good as in the Arteon. This is not semi-autonomous driving yet. When the engine is cold, the ride can be a bit jerky at times. I found a VW forum where users referred to this as the kangarooing problem. It affects other TSI engines as well. If you also encounter this problem, it's best to write down your observations as to when and how often it occurs, and then consult your dealer. The seats are comfortable, great on long distances. There is even a sort of massage function in the driver's seat, but the passenger gets three memory settings instead of two and a massage. 
which one you'd prefer let me know in the comments below the noise level is rather high it's especially apparent after a few hours drive when you get out of the car and continue speaking too loud it's even worse in the back where you get blankets but you should really get earplugs or noise cancelling earphones Skoda Superb is easy to drive on the road, but around the city it could use a 360 degree camera. The car is long, so it's best to reverse park it. There is a park assist feature, but not as good as in the BMW where all you need to do is press one button. Here you also need to control the gearbox as well as the accelerator and the brake. It can be a bit jerky and the automatic brake likes to intervene. It's not as seamless as one would like. And the end result? is somewhat surprising as well. Prices of the refreshed Skoda Superb start at €28,850 for a 150 horsepower 1.5 TSI motor liftback. Add a thousand for the estate. This test car with a 2 liter 190 horsepower motor DSG in top Laurin and Clement trim with options costs about €52,000. This is the VW Arteon territory. Despite the facelift, it is clear Skoda Superb's place in the group is under VW Passat. Skoda may get all the simply clever solutions, but especially in higher trim versions, it is clear it's a recycle bin for VW tech. And what are you looking for when choosing a large car? Is it the engine, the comfort, the new tech? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe, rate and share new episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.